Welcome to the Jenna Bank Show. I am Jenna, your host, and I am all about helping you live life to your fullest potential. I don't know about you, but I personally am on a lifelong spiritual journey. I have been since I was probably in my 20s. Now, I was raised in a very Christian, strict religious home. So I was raised with the Bible. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, Wednesday evening. I went to Christian school and all of that. So I studied the Bible a lot. But to be completely transparent and honest with you, the Christian faith, the Christian religion didn't just resonate with me. It didn't resonate with my soul and as a human being, not Jesus, because I love Jesus and his teachings. And I still very much admire all of that to this day. I love reading Jesus's words, but subscribing to a mm, organized religion that people manage is just something that has never sat true for me. It's never felt right for me. And that is why I went on my own spiritual quest to learn for myself, to see what resonated with my own soul. And along my journey, not too long ago, I came across a really amazing human being who has a warm heart, a kind soul, absolutely represents love. And his name is Danny Morrill. Now, Danny is also very much on his own spiritual journey, but he has gone way deeper, I feel, than I have. And so I feel like there's so much I could learn from him. So I reached out to him. We chatted a bit. I asked him to come on the show and actually teach me, show me some of these insights live. Um, I've already been gaining so many insights from his Instagram page, which is Danny Morrill. That's M-O-R-E-L. Uh, so at Danny Morrill. But anyways, um, so he had, he absolutely agreed to be with me here today. And so you're going to get to go down this journey with me in this conversation I'm going to have with Danny today. Danny Morrill is an awakening guide dedicated to helping humanity awaken their lives truest potential. He has helped hundreds of people transform their lives through his books, events, retreats, and seminars. He empowers you to your awakening by showing you the roadmap he used to build and sell a $1 billion a year in sales business, lose over 40 pounds, and create the life of his dreams. Danny, thank you so much for being here today and having this discussion with me. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So... I am so curious. I've never actually met an awakening coach before I met you. You and I had a conversation many months ago, and uh, that was really the first time. I didn't even know such a thing existed. What I'm just curious, what got you to go down this path? Like, how did you know you wanted to become awakening a coach? And what is an awakening coach for all of us to, or an awakening guide, shall I say? That's what you call yourself, right? Awakening guide. Yeah. You know, what's funny. That's like what my team calls it. I don't, I don't really like, I just like to think of myself as a human being who is on a journey of self-discovery and, uh, somebody that wants to help other people, um, discover themselves as well. And I'll, and I'll tell you what did it for me. What did it for me was the fact that I was living the quintessential life that everyone in this world is taught to live success driven, power hungry, materialistic. I had an Aston Martin. I had the gold Rolex. I had the big mansion. I, I had it all. Right. And <clears throat> I can honestly say at the same time, I had nothing, you know, yeah. and I was deeply, deeply insecure, uh, deeply afraid of yeah. being my true self of, of speaking my true voice. Um, I was so, concerned with what others thought of me. I was, uh, quite frankly, I was living a lie because I wasn't living true to what my heart, uh, was calling me to live. And if I take it a step even deeper, you know, as a man, you're taught to not even connect with your heart. So that was like a whole different issue. It was like a whole bunch of layers of the onions that needed to be peeled. And I was scared as all hell to peel it. And, mm -hmm. and so I, when I finally did it all, I thought, Oh my God, <laughs> like if I was living like this, think of the billions of people out there that are living like this, that have no idea. Yeah. And that's, that's it. You just decided you wanted to teach others what you came to know for yourself. I just, I just, I don't even know about, 
I, I just know I just want to, whoever's ready, there's a pathway to your heart. And, and when you get there, and when you truly get there, you, everything you've ever wanted in life will just appear. There's no, there's no effort. There's no grinding. There's no hard work. There's none of, there's none of what your typical like male uh, influencer is out there teaching you. Um, uh, When I see that these are people who are, you know, in their mind on the right path, but they, they, they haven't really discovered the truth um, just yet. So. Yeah, yeah. So what were you doing, Danny, when you were, you know, when you had all these things, what business were you in? Uh, I was a real estate broker. Okay. Yeah. At the time we had 400 agents uh, working at our company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had about 35 employees. Mm-hmm. I, I had mastered, you know, I, I call it the art of selling real estate. We were doing 1.1 billion in annual sales. It's amazing. About- yeah, about 40 million a year in, in revenue. And um, and I was only working in the company two hours a week. I, I built it in a way to where it was completely self-sustained. That um, seems to be what everyone wants to be striving for, right? Like you were supposedly living the life, reaching the pinnacle of where you're supposed to go. And yeah. yet you weren't happy. No, because I didn't even know what happiness was because, you know, uh, this gets really deep, but yeah. I'll, Please, I'll let let's ask. go there. Let us go there. <laughs> you ask me, whatever you ask, I'll, I'll answer. But Please. I mean, I didn't even know what happiness is because, you know, quite frankly, if you really, if you look at the layers of, of life and if you look at the layers of the programming of the mind and of the ego, and if you truly understand what real happiness is, happiness doesn't need anything. Yeah. Happiness just is, it's just, it's just you finding who you are. And so everything on top of that happiness is the heart. The heart is the zero point, right? And so everything on top of that, that you're taught, you need a man, right? A man to feel successful and powerful. A man needs big muscles, right? Yes. Yes. Look a certain (laughs) way. So then the man goes out and injects steroids and growth hormones. Yeah. And then the man is taught that he can't age. So then he colors his hair. Yeah. And most of these men, you see them with sunglasses because they're hiding their eyes in the depths of their soul. And uh, you've got all these fake tans and they've got to be standing oh, in God. front of the Lamborghini, which the big house behind. And this is your prototypical man. I mean, that's just a whole bunch of pain. Yeah. Yes. Man doesn't need any of that. So. Man- I call that looking for external power externally, right? It's more of a masculine trait to kind of seek that power, that external power uh, rather than the internal power. But the internal power I found is what really is the true power is uh, just loving yourself. My saying is your love is your power. Yeah. You know, your love is your power. You could put your love or attention or energy into all these things outside of yourself, but then it just creates insecurity, right? Because when those things go, you know, or, you know, if there's a fear of those things going or a fear of losing them, right. Then what that's your ego, that, right? That, that's right. What happens when you no longer, longer have the car? What happens yeah. when you no longer have the watch? What happens when you no longer something happens and you can't maybe afford the house? What happens yeah. when, what happens when all of that is gone? You feel that, devastated. You feel like you're dying, right? Well, well, what, you see, and this is what society doesn't understand is what they're, what we are really being taught is to live an external life. Yes. And, and, and listen, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, and I say this very gently, but it's the same thing for my sisters out there. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. we're, they're, we're, and I say we, because we're all one, but yes. you know, my yes. sisters are being taught to inject all of this stuff into their mouth and into their faces and attach body parts and do, and do all of these things. And it's like, you know, I'll tell you right now, and this is for all of my sisters that are out there, you go take the spiritual journey and you go deep into your heart and soul. One day you're going to wake up and go, oh my God, I, I really don't need any of this. You don't need it. Yeah. This. Yeah. 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 It's putting your power. I find it as putting your power in these external things. When you look within and you realize everything you need is inside, that's, that's right. all that really matters. And I love how you said, you know, happiness is inside. It's not in any of these external things. You can just be happy without any of that. What I find is that 
you know, if you really make a list of the things that make you happy, I have this thing I talk about in my book that just came out called the joy list, just a quick, simple little list of things that I can do to get me instantly in my happy place. None mm. of those consists of material things. It's listening to music, going for a walk on a sunny day, just quick, easy things that I know lift my spirits. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Those are the, meal. Exactly. Yeah. Being with your loved ones. Yeah. We're having a good conversation. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything material that's going to bring you that true, lasting, quick happiness and, or that not lasting happy, happiness, but quickly, like it'll, it'll activate instantly, right? In our mind, we project, oh, I'll be happy when I achieve this thing. Right. Right. Or, and then you when I find this man. Or if that find this man. Yes. Thank you. Chip, when I find the one, when I, everything is 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 external it's out there it's out there and it's this when i achieve this thing then i'll be happy the truth is you can be happy right now every day every single effing day you should be happy you can be happy and you have everything in your power to be happy single alone with a person not with a person with a family not with a family it doesn't matter you can be happy today and you have what it takes to make yourself happy right you know, yes, yes. And then there, there's, there's a no. And I, and I say there's a no, just because we haven't been programmed to believe the opposite. And so this is why awakening is so important, right? What what do you mean? Believe the opposite? Well, it's because we all are living life this way because we've been programmed to live life this way. I mean, just think for a second, just think from when you're a child and you go to school. Just let's, let's get really deep here, right? Let's do it. When you're a child and you go to school, you sit in a classroom with, you know, 30 or 40 other kids and you are listening to a teacher and the teacher is there to teach you. And if you do something the right way, you get validated. And if you yeah. don't do something the right way, then you don't get validated. And if you happen to be on the teacher's bad side, then the teacher scolds you. And you have all of these emotions that are going on inside of you. And it's all based around this teacher. What, what if you get stuck with a shitty teacher? Mm-hmm. What if you get stuck with the teacher who just got cheated on by her husband, who's ha- who's living, unfortunately, in a lot of pain? Guess who she will project that pain onto? Mm-hmm. She or he, by the way. And this is why, like, you know, uh, Claudia and I decided um, we were not only it, it went from us, you know, for us, public school just wasn't an option. Um, so then we put them in private school. But then in in private school, we started to realize once we had our awakening and we stopped going to church we started to realize like even in private school, the foundation is religion. Hmm. Religion is outside of you. It's mm-hmm. teaching. Oh, love this. It's yes, Danny. Heaven is outside of you. Yes. It's yes. teaching you that heaven is some destiny that you have to wait for. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when we started looking at all of these things, we started to, you know, realize that like school was basically programming our children to believe something that we knew just wasn't. Yeah. And and I'll just say it wasn't. And so then we took them out and we took them to homeschool. And then that's when we finally found uh, Acton Academy, which if you're a parent out there, you really need to look into. Literally, there's no teachers. There's only guides. The students teach themselves. It's beautiful. Oh, that is the best. You know, I went to a Christian school most of my uh, life until I hit uh, high school. And it was really just a couple of people in a church who who had these uh, materials that were based on a religious faith, but but it was study at your own pace. And I found that as a um, you know somebody who absorbed information very quickly, I, I I learned the best that way. So just learning at my own pace. Yeah. Um. So I I totally I love that. I agree with that. I'm a product of that. So yeah. Like I ended up going into high school in like public school ninth grade at the 11th grade level. Like I could, I could in honor, in honor classes. And I still didn't even have to go to school to like ace the test. You see, and like, and that's you mm-hmm. and that's your uniqueness in the world. And like, for me, I couldn't stand school. Mm. Like school was like, what am I doing here? And I was like, quite honestly, I was cheating half the time. 
just mm -hmm. <laughs> because like I, you know, I, I found a way like Danny always finds a way. Right. And, um, and, and, and yet, and I, and I think like so many beautiful children out there are being told that they are worthy or that they are unworthy based right. off of their performance in right. school, which if we're honest with ourselves, 95% of what you learn in school in these books, you're never going to use out in the real world. Like what yeah. made me financially independent was nothing that I learned in those books. It was quite honestly what I learned in the streets. Mm -hmm. It was what I learned when I had to beg for money every day in junior high because my parents couldn't give me enough money uh, to, to buy lunch. And I didn't want to stand in that free lunch line. It was what I learned when I had to knock on doors as I was building my business. And I knocked on so many doors that my, the soles of my shoes would, would wear out. It was those things. It's things that you, only you can teach yourself. Danny, you, know? you bring up something really important that I would love to deep, deep, uh, dive a little bit deeper into. And that is the hustle, having to go through hard times, having to struggle and go through challenges. I feel like that really shapes us as human beings. I feel like, you know, yeah. my struggle, I had a lot of struggle as a kid. I went through a lot of trauma. Um, I mentioned I went to high, you know, went to high school and I was uh, testing at 11th grade level. I didn't mention that I barely went to high school and had to get my GED. And that was the highest level of education that I have because I had to fend for myself and mm -hmm. go through a lot of struggle. I had a really crappy life in my, in both, both homes and ended up on my own at 16. I don't regret any of that. I don't, I don't wish that on anyone, but I don't regret the struggle that I had to go through because it gave me character, grit, tenacity, taught me that I I am capable of a lot when you have to be self-sufficient, you actually realize what you're made of. Um, and you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think that it should be to that extreme, but I think that there's something to be said for letting our children have some of that struggle, like figuring out who they are and have to, you know, go through some of that pain to, to, uh, you know, come out the other side a little bit more, uh, res resilient, I guess is the word. What do you think about that? Well, Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell it to you this way. Um, everyone's journey is their journey. Yeah. And all right, I'm going to share something that I, I really haven't shared too much. Um, you know, when I finally left church and I started to see the world for what it really was, I started to see that there's wonderful spiritual guides that you can tap into like psychics and that can read your cards and and mediums and there's astrology and there's like all of the stuff that is like that has been happening like for, for since the beginning of time yeah. that we have been taught was bad right right, right. And so you know i'll give you this example i'll give you this example of my son aaron many people know him he has a video there's a video of him and i that went so viral i think 50 million people have seen it by now oh Everybody, my god wow everybody shared it even janet Jackson. Everybody. Oh my God, Danny! Yeah, I have to was, go watch this video. Yeah, it was him, and he was he was he was uh, he was uh, struggling to get up this wall. Uh, he was like running and climbing up the one. He kept falling, and I had him do a visualization, and then I told him to go, and he and he made it, and he made mm. it. Well, you know, when we got his 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 uh, his astrology chart uh, uh, read, it said like he's here, like to do some really big things. Mm. Uh, and, um, and what said some other things, but when I read that, I thought, you know, how beautiful that he picked Claudia and I as his parents, right? That he came, listen to this. He came after we were divorced. He came basically right during that process. And he, in other words, his little mind doesn't remember her and I together. Hmm. Right. He only knows love. Like, I don't know if you understand how profound this is, but <laughs> he only knows, all he knows is his mother and I, after we went through what we went through, after we did the plant medicine, after we healed, and all he knows is love. Mm. And so he doesn't know barriers. He doesn't know you have to be married to love each other. He doesn't know. He just knows 
love That's two people who love him in his life who weren't to, who aren't weren't together when he was born so he gets it. to get your love separately feel the love between all of you and that's it and as, is he? and as a result of that like just think of how beautiful and perfect that is for for what he is here for you know you know what i'm saying yeah yeah it's a good nurturing uh ground really now now watch this i knew the opposite Hmm. Because when I was born, when I was born, um, my my mother's mother passed away when she was 13 days old. Hmm. So then my mother didn't know or receive that maternal love yeah. from her mother. Therefore, she didn't know how to give it to me. Mm -hmm. But I don't think like Aaron would be who he is if I, you, you, I guess. Yes. What it's all perfect guys like everything is perfect yeah compare yourself to anybody else don't mm -hmm. ever think because like look my kids don't have to struggle quite honestly like we struggle with the fact that they have it made and <laughs> every once in a while like we like to take them into the ghetto and we like to remind them where we came <laughs> from you know it's their journey so yeah. i would say everything is perfect and once you start accepting that and truly start loving yourself for the fact that you're here and you're on this journey. Yeah. And even through the hard times, it was, it was supposed to be to teach you and to help you to evolve. That's when life opens up for you. How old are your kids, Danny? Uh, la, 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 15. I can't mm. believe it. I have a mm. 15, 15 <laughs> 12 and six. Okay. So they're still really young. Yeah. 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 Mine's 27, he'll oh. be 28 this year. And so when I refer to the struggle, I guess I'm talking about adult, adult children, right? Because when, um, <clears throat> when, yeah, I, it, I feel like it's important to uh, let our kids go at a certain age. You know, sure. so I speak from that experience. Like I really wanted to, you know, I saw my son as a reflection of myself. Um, and I had so much of my identity wrapped up in how he turned out that when, he did some things that were not on track with the opportunities that I had lined up for him. It really, it just threw me through a loop, rocked me to my core, literally knocked me off my axis because you were attached. I was very attached. And yeah. also I had so much of my uh, self-worth and my identity wrapped up in how he turned out. And now that's something I think mothers can really relate to. I don't know if fathers feel the same way, maybe so, but I can only speak for myself as a mother and having to let that go. That was a really big epiphany for me that our kids aren't a reflection of us. They really aren't. They are here on earth to live out their own life's journey. And it is not our responsibility to dictate what that is. We can give them the best type of life possible. We can give them every opportunity possible, but it's up to them to, to choose right. their journey. And for us to try and think that it's in our control or that it, that we should have anything to do with that. We should take responsibility for how they turn out in the end. It's that's, I think it's like an ego based belief. Is, is that not? Yeah, yeah. We're here to guide and empower them. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So I'm I had to let that go. And I, I, I always, uh, I always think back to if, if you study uh, the Tibetan culture, you know, they, um, <clears throat> they, they, they raise their children and they call them God and goddess. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. there, was no, there was no discipline. They can't yeah. do wrong. They mm -hmm. don't get spanked. They don't anything. They simply just guide them to find their own path, their own way. That's uh, awesome. And I'll, and I'll give you another example. Um, in shamans in Colombia, um, uh, the indigenous people, when the when the tribe selects and knows that someone is meant to be a shaman, these little children live in a cave until they're nine years old. Wow! So they understand how to deal with the darkness. Wow. So, okay, I love that you're bringing this up because you do a lot of work with plant medicine, right? Yeah. It, is that still part of your practice? It was a very, very major part of my practice. Um, still to this day, you know, for some of our, I will say closest people and, and friends and community when they're ready. Yes. We, 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 
I don't want to say too much, but we point the way. Um, but, but, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's what changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. So it did change your life. I've never, I've never experienced anything like that. Um, but I would definitely not be opposed to it. Um, I've heard some really great things about ayahuasca experience, but also other plant medicines, uh, come to find out there's this, I don't know, tobacco that I forget the name of it. It cleanses you. What's it called? Mapacho. Mapacho. Okay. I wanted to try that because I, I heard it's not like a, you have some? Well, I have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hear it's not like, it's not like a psychedelic experience, more like that it cleans you out, cleanses you. And then it just kind of brings about more healing. Um, you know, I personally went through a lot of um, trauma healing uh, during COVID. Um, I didn't know I had that residue in my soul, in my energy field, if you will. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I thought just because I had survived my traumatic history and that I did well in the external world success wise that I was fine. Right. And yeah. so I never really worked on healing it because I didn't know there that was such a thing. I didn't know something needed to be healed, but what was happening was old stuff. The current stuff would trigger the old stuff. And I came to realize that uh, a lot of the times when we get really hurt by somebody, it's triggering old wounds. And then you react out of the old, the old pain. It's not to do with the new, new circumstance. It's to do with the old pain. And so it's a projection, a projection of the past. Right. If you got to go through and heal that, is that what you feel? Um, Cause I don't know. I haven't done this before. Is that what plant medicine can really do is kind of get you to go down that healing journey and really, really get rid of that? Well, not get you to go down. You, you're, <laughs> you're thrown you're, into it. You're going direct. <laughs> you're going direct. It's like, you know, so, um, I'll speak about mushrooms for a bit and I, and I have to be careful how I share this because, you know, most people use mushrooms incorrectly. That's and, right. Yeah. Use mushrooms, you know, to party or whatever the case may be. When you are in a shamanic setting in a ceremony and you have dieted for a week prior and, you know, your shaman will give you that guide, right. And, and we'll show you what to prepare, how to prepare energetically. And you're coming into it from a ceremonial space and you put your intentions on the mushrooms. I mean, I can tell you stories of things that have happened. You will not believe wow. you will not believe. I mean, I just, this last one, I just, this last one was a beautiful man. And if he's watching, he knows who he is. Um, he, he had a rough journey. Um, his, yeah, he had a rough journey and, and, and he was, he kept moving back and forth, moving back and forth, moving back and forth. And I saw him holding like his hip, you know, mm -hmm. and I was just, I was kind of watching. And, um, and anyhow, next thing you know, you know, after journey and after, uh, ceremony, which is, which is what we do at, at my event awaken, we, we take people through deep meditation and breath work, but is this the one coming up in June in Austin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Doing, uh, no medicine. We, we just, we give you the same effect basically yeah. without the medicine. But anyhow, um, after the journey, we do something called integration because it's very important because it's important for you to get it out vocally. It's important for you to, um, to, to say what came up. That's why like on Instagram, a lot of you guys don't know this, but when you comment, we will ask you what came up for you because it's important for you to get it out. Right. And that's mm -hmm. part of process. Anyhow, he shares that his brother had passed away just five years prior and that, um, he held so much, uh, personal guilt about it because yeah. he felt like he wasn't there or guess where he was holding the guilt in his hip. Oh God. Yes. And he says it's gone. Unbelievable. Who's what I'm thinking about this? He says, you, you know what else happened? He says it happened right about the time where that, that Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga movie came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. song, maybe it's time to let the old way. Maybe it's time to let the old ways. I remember that song. Yeah. And, and he says, and I just happened to play that song during the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And he, every time he heard that song, he would run from it because mm -hmm. that's what we do. We, we run, we don't want to feel. 
So he would run from it and he was forced to obviously sit there and listen to it. And it just brought so much healing and his hip is healed. And I just spoke to him the other day, his business is exploding. And, and, and that, and that's what I want to tell people is that, you know, I say like, you know, I talk a lot about materialism because that was my life. What I want to tell you is that when you really get into the energy of money, when you heal your heart and soul, you'll also heal your relationship with money. And when you do that, you'll realize that money is just energy and you are energy. And therefore you no longer use money to buy things, to get you validation, acceptance, appreciation, and love, because you are all of those things internally. Instead, what you do is you use money to get you the one thing that most human beings don't have. And that is freedom, the freedom to heal, the freedom to enjoy, the freedom to travel, the freedom to give back, the freedom to feed the poor, the freedom to help other people. And, and when you really find your heart, that's what you really find that money has just been you all along. Your relationship with money is your relationship with you. Oh, it's beautiful, Danny. I just got goosebumps. Yes. Currency, the root word of current currency is what current, right? To flow. That's right. It's just an energy. We want to keep it flowing oh. in our life. We need to be giving and receiving just keep that much, just energy. And I love that. Yes. When you do get some money, do, do the things that make for me personally, you know, I sold my company in late 2019. You better betcha. I was investing back into myself, my personal growth, giving back the things that I'm doing now. I'm a social entrepreneur now. Like if I hoarded it, you know, it would just like, you know, blood get stagnant and coagulate. And it would do nobody any good, not, not myself either. Now what I've done is I've kept it circulating, giving mm -hmm. back to myself, giving to others. And that's what it should be for. I love that so much. I also love what you said a little bit earlier about that discomfort level. You know, the gentleman you referred to had the pain and he had heard that song and he was kind of running from that. Um, I think a lot of us, you know, we tend to run from these uncomfortable feelings or the painful feelings and then we self-medicate or we just shove it down. A lot of us have been taught to do that. Um, and we think that that's doing the right thing. All we're doing is stuffing it, I feel like, in, into our energy field and letting it just sit there. And it just, uh, you know, just the next thing that triggers it, brings it up again. And then we're going through this pain all over again rather than actually healing these things. And if we are willing, I feel like I'm all about self-love. I feel like it's a very self-loving thing to let yourself go through these uncomfortable feelings for yourself so that you can heal. You have to feel them though, right? Like you mentioned, he got it out. He felt it all the way through. Is that part of the healing process is just letting it, letting it be whatever it is, ugly, angry, sad, hurt. Like, is that part of the healing journey? Yeah. Tomorrow I'm going to post a clip. Um, uh, and it's, and it's funny, you know, I'm going live on Instagram right now, but, uh, it's kind of funny because you're going to see me without hair in the clip. And, and it was because, uh, it, it was from two and a half, three years ago when I was going through my divorce. And I, and I want you to picture this. I want you to picture, you know, this, this guy that had built up this, this like house of cards, because that's what it was. I mean, I'm talking, I had like the one and a half acre lot with the gate that opens up with the Tuscan single story villa with the pool with the, I'm talking, I had all the shit, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and deep inside I had nothing. And, you know, I also, I, I, I also, because sometimes, you know, there's such this, this righteousness about our mindset. And so as a result, like, I'm not afraid to admit, like I, I use religion and I use God, like to, to, to make me like better. Yeah. You know? Right. And, yes. and, and so, and so the community, like, you know, looked up to me in a way, you know, uh, I, I was that guy who like, when there was a guy's trip, like all the wives would trust their husbands because they were going with me. Because they knew, like, if anybody wasn't going to do anything, it was Danny. <laughs> like, I was the good guy, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think I am a good guy. And I, I think I, 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 I do have a great heart. The, the problem was I, was I was in a cage emotionally because I wasn't myself. And, 
um, I, I wasn't happy. And so, you know, I, I had an affair and it, and mm -hmm. it's something that like tore me up inside because it's something that I never in my life ever, it was like, nope, I would never do that. I'm just, nope, never. And, and when it happened, I bring this up because all of the cards crumbled. And people tell me all the time, people say, well, Danny, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. And I go, nah, or, or they'll say something like, oh, everybody has regrets. And I go, no, nah, I don't regret it. And it wasn't a mistake. It was exactly what I, it was the medicine I needed to become the man that I am supposed to become. And as much pain as it caused, it was the medicine that my, that Claudia, she'll tell you the same thing. She said it was the medicine she needed because we were holding on to something that wasn't real. Mm -hmm. On to an idea that the world teaches you, that religion teaches you, that the pastor looked me in the eye and said, if you leave this marriage, you will lose all of God's blessings on your life. He said that to me. Wow. That moment right there, that moment was like, that's not love. Yeah, and that's I, mean, not I, don't, I don't know what love is. I haven't found it yet. This was three and a half years ago, but I know that's not love. That's guilt and that's manipulation. And yes, I know that there's something else out there for me. Anyhow, in the clip that I'm going to show you tomorrow, I'm going to post tomorrow on Instagram. I talked about this because I went from this beautiful mansion to a little two bedroom apartment, one for me and one for the kids when they would come over. And I, and I wanted so desperately to turn to something and to run. I wanted so desperately to grab a bottle of tequila and drink my sorrows away. And I wanted so desperately to call a woman to be with, to, to, to quite honestly, to use, right. To use in, in, in that moment of, of me feeling shame and guilt and aloneness, right. To use for comfort, which men do this, by the way, men do this, men who don't, who aren't connected to their hearts. They do this all their time. So ladies be careful and just be led by your heart and really, really feel through the energy of things. Right. And, and anyhow, in those moments, I wanted to run, but I didn't, I didn't. And I, I, I just sat there. I just sat there and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried and I was grieving and I was grieving the fact that I was never honest with myself, that I wasn't my voice, that I wasn't my truth, that I didn't know who I was, that I was living a life based off of what others wanted and thought. And, um, and that was the greatest source of my healing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we have to go through those tough times to come out the other side. Like I went through something not quite as difficult as that, although I went through a lot of difficult times, but I realized through some of that, one of those times had to do with money and I was very fearful about money. And I, and I was so, I felt so much anxiety about the money. Mm. And I'm like, why is this money having such a grip on me? I've always been fine. No matter what, if you think about it, in my entire life, I've always been fine. I've been fed. I've had a roof over my head. Now, not everyone can say that, but I've still survived and I'm here and I'm okay. And even in the toughest of times, I was still okay. You know, I had to let that go. It was such a beautiful, it was so hard. It was so hard, Danny. I was like, I had so much fear and I realized how much of my worth I had wrapped up in the money and how much I feared, like if it went away and, and I had to come to the realization that I'm fine. Even if I just have a roof over my head and food in the refrigerator, what is the difference of having numbers in a bank account? I mean, you know, versus, you know, uh, not having numbers in a bank account and still having a roof over your head and food in your, I mean, what's, What's the effing difference, really? Like you're still control of your happiness. You can still listen to music. You can still go on a walk on a sunny day. You can still spend time with your friends. I mean, truly, it just was a huge eye-opening moment for me to just say, you know what? I, I I gotta let go of this attachment to money. I feel like it was an attachment. Um, I think a lot of us do get attached to it, and the society kind of sets us up for that. I hear, I see your wheels spinning. <laughs> I'd love to learn your thoughts on that. For me, it was just a big deal. It was such a, a burden lifted off of my shoulders when I let that attachment go 
and just got into the idea of, look, money will come and go. There's no, um, the universe is abundant. Abundance is your birthright. And, you know, you're already abundant just by being here on this planet. So really just learning to embrace what we have and not worry about it. You know, what's supposed to happen will happen. We get so caught up in money. And that was such a, I loved that I got to go through that suffering because it allowed me to let go. <laughs> your look on your face is, I love it. It's so peaceful. Like, <laughs> How was your relationship with your father? Not good. Yeah. Yeah. I bring that up because uh, I was able to see and feel a lot of what you went through. And that relationship is what caused the relationship with money mm. because money is safety. Um, it's protection. And in many ways, you didn't feel that as a little girl. And um, as I was thinking and feeling all of that, I was thinking that um, you know there's 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 some very deep healing that um, that needs to take place when you're ready. And um, Mother Ayahuasca is, I think, going to start calling you here pretty soon. Uh, I feel like it already has been. <laughs> I was afraid to say that, but that's what I was sensing. Yeah. And, um, we'll talk after. Okay. That sounds great. Actually, I did speak to somebody else here who does some plant medicine healing. And she said the same thing. She says, I know you've gone through a lot of healing, Jenna, but I still see some residual oh, stuff there. And let me, exp and we'll get deep here. And by the way, thank you for being vulnerable. And if, if oh. you don't, like, I don't, if you don't want me to share, I, I won't. No, 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 no. I, I like you, I'm, we're very similar in the way that we want to, we're both on our own journey and we want to, help others through Other, our journey as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The more vulnerable we are, but you know, I think sometimes this concept of healing is like a little mis mis mistrued a little bit because there's getting over it in your mind, but real healing happens in the heart. Mm. Real healing happens, especially for you as a woman is, is reconnecting with your heart and with your womb mm. and in, in, in the deepest most sacred, most, most vulnerable way that you can imagine. So that, because you see the mind is masculine. And so like, yeah, up here, up here is like, yeah, I got over the fact that money and the money, blah, 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 but I'm talking. Mm. Okay. Sign me up for that. <laughs> Wait, I know our time's limited. So I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, uh, gosh, no, <laughs> this is, this is what happens when you're getting close to 50. It's like, it's there <laughs> and then it goes, wait, wait, there was something I wanted to get into with you. Um, we talked about plant medicine. We talked about, you also do, I know you do the uh, speaking, you've got your event coming up. I want to tell everyone also make sure that you follow Danny on Instagram. He has some really, really great content there, which is now jogging my memory as to what I was going to ask you. Um, so Danny is at Danny Morrill, right? That's your, uh, that's your Instagram handle. So definitely follow Danny. So you had posted, I think it was a story many months ago. And you mentioned something about women, women and the womb and our birthright and all of that. And I found it really fascinating, your take on the role that women and the feminine energy plays. And I, I don't know if that's jogging your memory as to what you might have posted, but I would love, it does. Okay, great. I'd love to just hear a little bit from you on your insights into that. Well... Uh, we, all of us are all love. And, uh, when you really understand, again, there's understanding and understanding when you really understand what that really means, it means that there is nothing different between you and I, and none of you and I, and there's no one better or no one worse. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so in many ways, we've been tricked. We've been tricked into thinking that we're all separate. And so then the mind, the masculine, the ego tries to separate us even more. So it created this thing called racist. 
And um, as a result, the mind, ego, and darkness try to separate us even more through this thing called racism. Mm -hmm. And then it created this thing called countries. And then it created uh, this thing called classes through economics. Do you know what heals all of that? Mm. Love. I like to say love is God. That was a big epiphany for me because we're taught through all these religions that God is love, but like you experienced for yourself in the church, you weren't often being shown that. Well, I was too. I was raised that way. And I often was not shown love. So, by the church. so, so if the mind is masculine, then what is the heart? Feminine. And is love in the heart, then what is the key to all of us returning? Mm, to mm, mm, mm. The feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And that means that, and the reason why I share what I share is because when the woman, when the woman returns to herself, when the woman It's all by design. Uh, the woman has been taught that she is not worthy, that she is not enough, that, that she needs a man, that she needs to inject herself, that she needs to look a certain way, that she needs to change herself because she's been taught to compete with the other woman for attention, more separation. When the woman is finally able to, and this takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage. I literally had a conversation with someone that I love dearly, who is in a process where she is, you know, dealing with the fact that she's going to have to remove these things because it's not only no longer resonating with her body, it's no longer resonating with her, her soul, really. And that's what I told her. And I said, you, you think it's for your body. It's, it's for your soul's evolution is, is really what it is because it mm. takes a lot of courage, a lot of courage to step away from all the programming. I bring that up because when the woman, when the woman really returns to the essence of who she is and she turns into the goddess that she was meant to be, that's when the family changes. That's when the t children heal. That's when the world heals. That's when everything just... Ah, oh, Danny, you couldn't have landed on anything better for us to end this on. I, I want to just, I want to continue that discussion with you privately, and maybe one day we'll do a whole nother podcast just on that. Yeah. But that's beautiful. That's what I was getting from what I saw on your Instagram post, and it's so true. You know, I'm doing this work with self love and women. I'm really focused on women because I'm a woman. I know what my experiences were as a woman and the social norms that we face as women and all these things that you mentioned, same thing. Um, and I, I'd never really, you know, you've gone down much further down the spiritual journey than I have, although I'm very much on my spiritual journey and I have been for a good part of my life, but, um, you know, uh, I, I know instinctively, innately, that that is the work I'm supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. that it's so important for us women really to love ourselves. That's, right. um, that's part of that process and part of the healing from thinking that we need to compete with each other and do all this external stuff and put the fake boobs on and, and get the guy's attention and think that happiness is outside of ourselves. And if we get married, then we'll be happy and fantasize about this amazing magical wedding day. And then that'll be bliss from there on out, which is not true. Um, <laughs> it, we have to find it within ourselves and we have to heal ourselves. So um, I feel really blessed to be part of this process. Yeah. Um, and, and I really would love to continue learning from you and I hope everyone also will just connect with Danny. Definitely follow him on social, sign up for his new newsletter on his website. He does coaching. He does, he speaks, he's got his event coming up in Austin. So definitely check that out. That's June 2nd through 4th. What's that called, Danny? It's called Awaken. And I, I want to tell everybody why I made this because I, you know, I know there's a, there's a delicate balance out there and there's a trust that has to happen if you're really going to heal. And, and I, and I, can I share the story behind this real fast? This is, 
I have t- literally two minutes and I hate to cut this short. I could do this for hours, Danny, but I have to hop on another call in a few minutes. Real come, life. Uh, yes. Come to awaken. Um, not for anything that I can give you for what you can find within yourself. Yes. That's the key. So. Yes. Definitely, definitely. But visit Danny's website to learn more about that. Danny, what's your website name? Uh, by the time you post this, it'll be dannymorell.com. Okay, it's going back to that. Okay, dannymorell.com because I know it was something global now. Okay, so dannymorell.com. Check him out on Instagram. Are you also active on other social channels, Danny? I'm, I'm everywhere, but Instagram is where I have the most. Fun. My favorite too. I don't know why. I just, I, I, I love Instagram. All right. Awesome. Danny, thank you so much for being a guest today. I really appreciated having you here so much. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. Wasn't Danny Morrill awesome? He's such a good, kind-hearted, warm, loving human being. And I'm so grateful for this discussion today. Thank you so much, Danny. If we haven't connected on social media yet, I'd love to connect with you there. I'm super active on Instagram, Facebook. Um, you'll find me at my handle, which is at jennabanks.0. If you like LinkedIn, I'm also really active there as well. Uh, just type in my name, Jenna Banks, and you should find me that way. Also, visit my website, jenna-banks.com to Get a lot more content from me there. You can sign up for my newsletter. I'll keep you posted on all the things that I'm up to. And um, also you'll find information about my new book, which is I Love Me More, How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self-Love, which uh, as you may or may not know, I am all about self-love, but not just loving yourself, loving yourself more. And I'll share insights with you about what that book is all about on my website. So definitely check that out. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button now because I have so much more to share with you in the future about how we can live life truly to our fullest potential. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope to see you again next time. And remember, your love is your power. Until next time.